My name is Vahid Chitos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here today. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Sure. Um, everybody, my name is Anna Dolce. I am based out of Miami, and I'm a coach, consultant, speaker, author, many things. Awesome. Miss 9596. You, you forgot to mention that. So forgot I'm to Georgia. mention that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, definitely don't. You don't, conveniently don't remember. That. Yeah, so how do you go from modeling and doing that to coaching and mindset? Like, that's a big, you got to go through a lot of learning curve. I guess, you know, you probably have overcome a lot of different adversity. So let's talk about that. Um, how do we yeah. go through stuff? Yeah, I'll, I'll give a quick story, I guess. Um, so I ha I'm a holder of two titles, which is Miss Georgia 1995 and 1996. And for those of you who are not familiar with Georgia, it's not the peach state that I'm referring to. I'm referring to a country of Georgia in Europe, right? Vahid, you probably are familiar more than other people. Um, so I was actually my... corrected once in Las Vegas because I didn't know that. This was like 10 years ago. <laughs> so now every time I see it, I'm like, oh, hold on a second. See, it comes in handy right now. It about. came in handy. So now, <laughs> yeah, so it came in handy. Yeah, so that happened in 1995 and 1996, quite a while ago. Um, um, and that, that was during the time when Georgia and that part of the world was in a very chaotic economic and political state. Um, so, um, after, basically I had an experience of becoming successful and famous, um, throughout my nation where I'm from overnight, literally overnight. And it was quite an experience. Um, but how I got here from there basically was, um, I wanted to leave my country because it was no way to thrive at the time, let alone survive. Um, it was a really, really difficult, chaotic situation in every way. Um, so I kind of went on this journey of um, an immigrant journey of getting out of the country and first landing in Germany and then making my way to the United States. And the rest is history. I, I agree. I got a question for you. Yeah. You did your TED Talk and TED Talk was about the girl Kiana. Yes. Let's talk about that because I think a lot of people don't know about that. So let's let's talk about that story. Give us the sure. short version because I want everybody to go watch it later on, but give us yes. the short version of what it is. Yes. So um, the short version is um, I'm very passionate, uh, almost zealous about hospitality uh, because my first kind of in, while I was an immigrant in New York, was in the hospitality industry. I started as a bartender, later on became a manager and kind of rose through the ranks of hospitality industry. Uh, but one biggest missing piece I discovered through that experience was that the biggest missing piece in the hospitality industry is this aspect of hospitality. You can go to a hotel, a restaurant, and you probably more often than not, you will get a mediocre or less than mediocre service, right? You really don't feel like you're part of anything. You're sort of um, pushed through the conveyor belts of restaurants or hotels. You feel like a number. Um, and the Kiana story um, that Vahid is referring to is in my TED Talk, and I describe this experience where um, a server in a hotel restaurant almost made me cry, actually made me cry because um, hotel restaurants are notorious for their kind of cold and transient uh, feel, right? When you go to a hotel restaurant, you don't feel like you're in a local spot. You feel like everybody is kind of going in and out and nobody really knows anybody's name. And um, you see them one day and you won't see them the next. But this was different. This was a, a, a woman by the name of Kiana who was a waitress there. And as soon as I went inside the lounge where she was waiting on almost 30 people by herself, it was a really amazing experience where you felt like you've known Kiana all along. The kind of presence and attention and hospitality she provided to me kind of stopped me in my tracks. I forgot all about my food and I just sat there staring at her. And when it was time for me to leave, I started, you know, tearing up, tearing up. And um, I asked her, you know, Keanu, how did you learn to be so hospitable? Where is this all coming from? And she says that she's like, this is just it's in my heart. She's like, it's just part of who I am. So that solidified my um, kind of research and experience with hospitality, that it's something that is internal. You can definitely develop it, but um, it, it, it is within you. 
right? I call it. How do we get a hold of China? What's that? How do we get a hold of China? I try to get a hold of her. I actually emailed her after that experience several times. So get that email. Just give me the last time I found her phone. <laughs> okay. You go too slow. Okay. <laughs> we don't do that. Maybe in Florida, you all do that. <laughs> we all in LA. We pick up the phone. We you're say, fast, "Hey, what's up?" Can you do the show? You're New Yorkers, right? <laughs> Actually, she's email. on my email list. She's on my email list, and I think she's been opening my email. So I got to do another reach out to her and see if uh, she responds this time. But well, I'm yeah, okay if you want to give me the email, and then I'll Let's send an it. email. But if I don't get a hold of it in two days, I'm we'll calling send our her. Troop. <laughs> the, you know, I call. I get on the phone. I, I'm good at finding people via phone. Let's do it. Let's phone. do it. I always wanted to speak it's, to her afterwards. Yeah, definitely. We'll get it because I believe there are a lot of Kianas in the world. But they're not being recognized, and I think because of our perception, our historical vision that we have, we assume that all hotels have those type of restaurants. So we might actually, as consumers, we may actually not even pay attention to it unless right. you are called upon to hey, pay attention, what's going on? And maybe some of them are, you know, cold. They just you just do whatever you got to do, but. To me, it's like you got to be conscious of your your surrounding. You got to have your level of awareness. Yeah, so and I find that food. sometimes you have to, as a customer, you have to give that invitation sometimes to people who are kind of going through emotions. When you show the hospitality from a customer's point of view, you know, when you're a customer, you can also be hospitable. It's not just the waiter's job. You have to sometimes open the conversation and invite people in. So we as consumers have that responsibility. Also, so let's talk about what is what is the definition of success? Because a lot of uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of young entrepreneurs, especially females, are looking through your profile and they're like, mm -hmm. I don't know, 1995 or 96. She looks like she's 21 years old. So I don't know what you're talking about being 95. That was like down the block. <laughs> so they look at that and you look like 21, 22. I don't know what you guys do, but I'm 21. Must be good stuff. 21. <laughs> I'm aging cool, backwards. Cool. Still, That's the goal. Cool. We, age but. They're looking at you and you're a role model for them. What is your definition of success and what should be their definition of success? So success to me, Vahid, is very, very um, personal, right? Success means something different to you and something different to me, obviously. It's very personal. And for me, it's, um, it's a piece, so for me, it's a peace of mind. Uh, which is a result of knowing that I did the best I can to become the best version um, of me or best version of whatever area I'm pursuing um, that I could possibly become, right? For me, it's a peace of mind of knowing that I did everything I could. Um, and I think that is we all are able to do that. But sometimes we don't feel successful. Why, while by this definition, you might be successful, but you might not feel successful because you're kind of going after somebody else's version of success, right? The common versions of you have to be famous and successful and wealthy and, and this and that and have things, right? Um, acquisitions. And that's not always success because you, can't, you still can't buy the peace of mind. Um, of knowing that you did everything you could uh, to become the best version of you or best uh, coach or consultant or model or whatever that you can become. So that's what it means. Listen, I want to make my own little city with like 20 people in it and I want to do modeling for them. And success <laughs> to me is like, you know, I'm like, you know, Mr. So-and-so for that city. So I'm working on that. So here's my question. Here's my question. <laughs> Why are you laughing? That's one of my goals. I got to put that in there. I support you. Know, I you. I'm a, a good-looking guy. You. I think you support me. Thank you. Modeling you are my wife. More. That's true. <laughs> Modeling is way more than just the look. You know, that's a, oh, it's, it's, it's hard work. It is. You know, Miss Georgia it's or Miss whatever is not just about looks. There's a lot that goes into it that's behind the scenes that that is not really discussed. And I think that's what it is because I've had a few individuals that were in modeling and acting who are in different fields today and I've had them in my studio and you got to be tough skinned showing up every I mean there's a lot of mindset that goes to modeling and to me it has nothing to do with looks because yeah, there are a lot, a lot of pretty of them, girls in the world a lot of pretty guys yeah, in the world are, right it's 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 really tough showing up day in day out and yeah. you 
it's yeah. game on because when the photographers are there, when the event happening, you know, maybe business owners could like say, okay, let's push back the event. Let's push back this. You know, it's okay if I'm not on my game today. We'll make up the sales tomorrow. But if you're a mom, they showed up, you better have what they're looking for on that day, on that minute or else. Yeah. So to me, it's like a lot more pressure. A lot more. And when you are part of, you know, any miss, um, miss whatever, right? You know, miss universe, uh, especially miss universe. There's a lot that's going on behind the scenes that uh, viewers do not see. These girls are grilled and evaluated in, in so many other ways than the, the looks. The looks is just what we see on TV, but we don't see the preliminaries. We don't see how they're grilled before they even get on stage. So, um, so why nobody's more. doing a documentary on that? I feel like that that definitely, I haven't seen on History Channel or Discovery Channel any documentary of anything like that that's for like in the past five years. Because I know if they have a documentary, I look at everything. So yeah. I don't know if this, so somebody maybe, maybe that's something. Maybe they will make it. You know, last, um, last Miss Universe, they kind of touched, touched on that a little bit. Um, it was not a full on documentary, but uh, they created the first ever women jur jury. And um, they were they were kind of going deeper on that. So I think it's coming. Thank God. We need to, because I think there are a lot of individuals that compared themselves with someone else's 20th step and then you're starting brand new. So I feel like you have to work your way up. You can't go from basic math to calculus overnight. You right. got to work your way up there. And working your way up there gives you a lot of uh, insight in what's going on. So let's go back to success. If there's somebody out there that just started in their entrepreneurship uh, journey, what are some of the suggestions that you have as a coach for them? That's a very broad question. <laughs> That's well, a very, let me rephrase. Let me rephrase. Very broad question, right? Let, let's, let me rephrase. The last five, 10 individuals you worked with, mm -hmm. what were the common denominators that were holding them back from their success? What were one or two tips that you could give us so at least we unblock those? Yes, that's, um, that's a little more granular. So I can kind of address that. Um, the, the most common, uh, I guess, blocker for people or a block for people that I see in my practice, people who come to me on a, because I do business coaching and personal and life coaching as well. So it kind of all meshes together uh, because business, business problems are people problems in disguise, always. Um, so individuals usually have uh, number one issue is believing in themselves, right? Mm -hmm. We always look for um, either information or other people who validate us when we feel the weakest and the most vulnerable. And we always do. I mean, um, running a business and starting uh, your entrepreneurial journey is the most vulnerable thing you can do. It's the most difficult journey that you can take on probably. Um, so biggest thing I see is um, a lot of us don't understand how powerful we are and how resourceful we are and what we can do um, when we are kind of left to our own devices in terms of thinking um, and kind of going within and finding them power inside of us rather than polling Instagram or polling our family and asking the world what they think if we are capable. We kind of don't realize our own power. So people in my practice, um, probably uh, that's the biggest benefit that they get, that they have somebody in their corner who understands that I'm not going to buy into their BS of their own self-limiting beliefs that, they, that we all have, right? We all have these limiting beliefs. Uh, so that's number one. People don't believe in themselves. Um, so you have to, the way you conquer that, um, you go within and you... Um, look at all other areas of your life, right? Let's say you want to start a business, but you, you don't feel confident. You think that you're not good enough to start a business and you might fail or you might succeed. And that's going to be a, a, a you know, a disruption of, of other areas of life. Um, you kind of look at other areas of your life and say, okay, where have I succeeded? And look at, look at how powerful you were. I'm, I bet every human being can look back at something and say, hey, I persevered in this. And that's just proof enough that you can do it. So it's kind of rekindling your own power. So that's the main thing. Um, second one. I, mean, mm -hmm. I, I was going to comment. I was like, I feel like we all need our moms or fathers that are supportive at our corner all the time because my mom, till today, she believes I can do anything. She feels I'm like super, Superman. 
And mm-hmm. she feels like anything I want to do, she's like, yes, you can do it. I'm not like, shouldn't you be preventing me from some of the stuff that I do? Like, it's very dangerous, very reckless. You know, I could lose money. We could do this. How do we, so at what point did we lose that? Because as children, there are, there's no limiting beliefs unless someone else gives us that limiting beliefs. When we say no to our children, oh, you can't do this, you shouldn't want this, or no, don't. So at what point, or what can we do to prevent that? So when we get older, when we're like 20, 30, 40, we don't carry those limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like we know we have it, but how do we get it? Or how do we prevent it from getting it? Yeah, so this is a great question. The way we get it is, um, I say in our in our childhood, um, usually between somewhere between four, five, and ten, twelve. You know, generally it could be earlier, it can be later, but generally in that, um, in in the, in the, during those years of our lives, um, something happens, right? It could be a comment, it could be an event, it could not even be such a traumatizing event. It could be a neutral comment uh, that somebody made or neutral experience that we as children give it a meaning. Now it could be something traumatic like your father leaving and you not growing up with your father or your mother being abusive, those kind of experiences. Or you can be like uh, somebody didn't buy you a Christmas gift and you gave that a certain kind of meaning. So as children, we are defenseless. All we can do is kind of adapt because we derive a lot of, um, we, we derive a lot of validation and love from performing. If we perform a certain way, our parents validate us by love or caring because we cannot care for ourselves. So we become adaptable and we, we give things a meaning that we give. And a lot of those meanings are not very empowering meanings because as children, we, our brain is not developed enough to give it an empowered meaning. All we can do is defend ourselves and kind of adapt to, let's say if your dad is very strict, you are going to be, um, if he's hard on you, you're going to be hard on yourself because if you're hard on yourself, you're showing him that you're trying and that's how you get his validation, for instance, right? Um, so this is not a healthy habit, but you become adaptable as a child because that's the only way you feel that your dad gives you love, appreciation, validation, affection, right? And then that person, that child grows up and we carry that through our adulthood um, and the way you get rid, you don't get rid of it. The way you, um, you understand it first, where it comes from. And then there's this word adulting, right? And adulting means to not relive our childhood experiences over and over again. But for us to be able to do that, we have to unravel it, understand where it's coming from, how it formed. Um, and then we're able to do something about it. Um, instead of just blindly navigating through life and being kind of um, you know, like a leaf, you know, wherever the life blows you, that's where you go, or you react, you're provoked from someone on the outside, and you just react because you have this childhood wound that you never, ma- never handled and never gave any attention to. So first, we need to understand what is the trauma, because we all have that trauma, we all have that, um, we, we became adaptable, we all adapted to something instead of kind of, because uh, there is no perfect parenting, you know, our parents didn't have it, uh, an instruction manual. Uh, they did the best they could. They were also parented by their own parents. So it's inevitable that they will injure us in some way. We either neglected or abandoned or given too much attention or not enough attention, right? There is no perfect parent. Even if it's a parent that told you, oh my God, Vahid, you're the best and you can do everything, right? That's also well, problematic. Don't take that because... away. I still want that to be true. I still want my mom to say that. So don't take that away. I'm going to tell her <laughs> that you said she can continue saying that, right? Sometimes yeah. she believes in me so much. It's just scary. I'm not like, why is she saying I could do that? Like today, you could be calling my mom and say, listen, that he dropped out of school, wanted to be a doctor. He's going back. She's like, yeah, that's fantastic. He could, he's going to be the best. Guy. I'm not like, mom, I'm almost 40 years old. Do you understand that you have a lot of limited brain? Like, it, it's a lot of work. She's like, nope, I believe you. You could do it. So what? You do it in 10 years. I'm like, mom, I'll be done by like 55. And if I'm alive at age 60, I'm going to be start practicing. Do you want someone at age 60 to do a heart surgery on you? Would you rather like, have somebody that's overly optimistic or somebody that's pessimistic, Vahid? Well, this one is on the other side. So here's my question. Here's my question. The real life scenario, if my daughter goes up, there's a competition. 
she does not get the first trophy. She's not number two. She's number three. Do I still go cheer for her? Because if I do that, I'm being supportive. I love you regardless. And then on the other side, I'm like, no, you suck. You finish at number three. You should have been number one. So how do you balance to make sure that you still want to improve? Because if I say good job, she's going to say by coming number three, it's still a good job. Where it's not. You're the number one or you're not. Number two is like the biggest loser because you lost to number one, right? So how do you keep the competitiveness there? And then how do you love them at the same time? I feel like now you need to have a full 30-minute conversation with her. And then if you're doing that at age 12, is that going to be so it, can it, she comprehend it? It goes back to my own definition of success. So to me, um, the healthy way to do to to validate or praise first of all you have to figure out what the goal is if you're a type of father who um win or nothing you know like vince lombardi said winning is the only thing right if you're that kind of person you can it's going to be problematic because your child will grow up um performing and you know high achievers are high performers they perform because they achieve because they want the validation usually from their father or from their mother, right? From, from how they grew up. Um, so what I would do is um, underline and look at her effort and validate her effort. You know, she might've worked very hard for that number three spot. Like, I don't know if you um, watched um, Michael Jordan documentary. Did you watch it? The, 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 on Netflix or Amazon? Um, it's on... It's not on Amazon. It's on ESPN, I believe. It just oh, okay. came no, out. If seen. you didn't watch I it. I know they um, just did one with Kobe and Michael was in it too. I saw that. That just recently came out. But I have not watched the one with Jordan. Okay. So you, you're probably going to watch it. You probably should. And there's Steve Kerr. You know who Steve Kerr is. He's, um, right. he's a coach for Warriors right now. Um, right. He played with Michael Jordan. And he admitted on the documentary that he exerted himself completely. He did the very best he could, but he would never be Michael Jordan or Scottie Pippen or Dennis Rodman. He had, he was a role player and he has a very, very integral part. He was a very integral part of the team. So your daughter might be getting to level three or, or um, third prize or whatever. Third. Um, what did you say again? She was third place. She became third place. But she might have exerted all of her efforts, and that's the best she can do. I, I don't believe in, in winning at any cost. I don't think that um, competition is healthy, but the healthy competition is not just about winning. You know, um, my favorite, I'm very much into basketball. I don't know if you can tell, but um, if you know John Wooden, um, the famous coach, he said that it's not the scoreboard that matters. What matters is um, what makes you a loser or a winner is knowing how good of a game you played internally. You know, did you put yourself out there? Did you do everything you could? Because that's what makes the best, best team, not necessarily the scoreboard. And he won like 13 championships. He was a legendary coach. So there is not just one way to win. There is not just one way to get it, you know? Um, yeah, so because when I feel like we're, we're artificially putting these metrics I mean, I know a lot of gurus online and on YouTube speak, like number one at this, we're the best at this, yeah. but they're all like arbitrary. Like we came out, like there's no, I feel like we're missing a lot of data or we're number one in this category because it's, so somebody else could come and say, no, we're number one. So, you know, when Verizon says we're number one or T-Mobile says number two, I don't know what they're, what they're referring to. You know, in some areas, T-Mobile is better. Some areas, right. Verizon they is better. They have a lot of Someone performance like, metrics. They, they, it's not all believable, yeah. They can so be measuring so with, many things. Yeah, that's what they come up with. So how do people can find you? Best way to find me is on my LinkedIn or on my Instagram. Instagram is Anna underscore Dolce, Anna with two N's. And LinkedIn is just my first name, last name, Anna Dolce. Probably the most active on those two platforms. Fantastic. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time that, you know, being with us. Um, we'll definitely, some of the topics we talk, I think it's going to need way more than 20 minutes. So we got to, yes. we got to go. I mean, there's, yes. I mean, there's a whole entire thing just on parenting. 
Nobody Absolutely. tells you what you're supposed to do, what you're not supposed to do. And a lot of people fake it externally, but internally they mess up. But a lot of people outside, they put on, you know, they, they, it doesn't look good, but actually they do good. In, so I think there's a lot of... Uh, we learn listen, how to I'm, parent I'm from our parents and, and they did the best they could, but we have to constantly learn. We have to find our ways to parent and kind of keep up with the times. There's so much information out there right now, so much uh, information on psychology and parenting. We can always get better. Yeah, I feel like it, but I... I I don't know. You could argue about that. I don't know if you're doing your best. I don't know if people can hide behind that. I have a higher standards. I feel like if you said you did your best, how do you know you did your best? That's the thing. Only you know that if you did the best, your best or not. Well, come on, then most people are going to bullshit say I did my best. Nobody's going to be. And know, they have to the live with those it. results, right? Because I feel like the level the, of at the end of your life, have, at the end of your life, you're going to know inside, you're going to know, hey, did I live the last 80 years to the fullest? Did I really exert myself? Did I really go after what I wanted? Or did I not? So, you know, like they say, success. But do you need a coach to call you out on it saying, hey, no, this is not your best. You can do your best. Like, is it okay? Or is it, should it be that someone calls you out on it saying that, no, this is not your best. You can do more. And this, you just... I feel like, I don't know, if we're competing, like, how do we know number one is really number one and that is the best they could do? If Only nobody you, calls you out. Like you, if, let's say you sit, like I had a writing project today, right? So I've been writing from, I blocked out a time from 12 to three to write. And between the 12 and three, like first hour, I was not writing. I was lollygogging around. Yeah, I wrote enough words. I, I wrote a lot, but it first hour I know I didn't do my best I know I was kind of trying to get in the mood and I was distracted right so nobody can check me on that but I it comes from into do you have the integrity to look at yourself and correct yourself and talk to yourself because if you don't then you're going to reach talk. the end of your career or your life and you will have yourself to blame yeah you can utilize your coach but nobody really needs to tell you what to do you know what to do right you, you know when you, when you when no one you build yourself or your business when no one is watching. Exactly. You don't need, you don't necessarily How do you get to that back. state though? How do we get someone who's 20 to that state? Because most of the people that think like that, that I have come across, not that they don't exist, that I have come across, it's later in life. I don't want to yeah. say when you get older, but it's late. So how do we get someone who's 20 to think so like someone that? someone who's 20... We they already think that way as long as they're doing what they're interested in. But we have a way of conditioning, conditioning young people to, hey, you follow this path, follow this career. This is what, what's going to take you to quote unquote success. But whose success are we talking about? Because if you take a 20 year old, they might be interested in something that you don't even have any idea about. When I was 20, um, I don't know, people were sitting on computers and playing video games and I had no idea what it was, right? So they were really passionate. My neighbor was so passionate about, he was making money from it then. And my parents didn't understand that. They're like, oh, he's always sitting on the computer. God knows what he's doing, but he was already making money. But his parents didn't say, hey, no, go to a law school or become a doctor for you to be successful. There's more than one way to become successful, quote unquote. So we have to, I think, give them permission to um, explore and find out what are they really passionate about? What, they, what are they really wanting to do? Because if you want to do it, if you want to do something, you don't need motivation. Motivation is for amateurs, right? You, we all become professionals when we are entrenched in something that we really, really want to be in, whatever that is. I mean, motivation gets you started, but I think your habits keep you going. True. But I think motivation is once in a while is a necessity. So listen, some days, I don't feel like doing what I need to be doing. And it's just like, like you said, distractions. A lot of other yeah. things happen. You know, but do you, you still can't do, block it? Do, you still do it? Do you still do your work? Yeah, because usually every two, three hours, my wife checks with me and then I already <laughs> know what's up. So I have external motivation, <laughs> yeah. more like a dictatorship. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, hopefully yeah, she's not so watching when, this when you don't feel like doing something and you do it anyway, that's called professionalism. Professionals go up and they go out and they do what they need to do, whether your wife yells at you or however that happens, right? Um, because she doesn't even people, have to say it. She just gives you the look. She just has to she look at you, right? eyes and it's done. <laughs> that's it. You better go that's get right. your, You better. But here's, here's, here's the crazy part, though. Like, I don't give a shit about business, this, this, this. Like, me not disappointing her is way more important to me than making money. But like, listen, she said we got to get this thing done. Or she was yeah. anticipating. I, I have this imaginary person that I created that she is that yeah. she keeps saying, I have higher standards. If you're not here with me and my daughter, your ass better be working. If you're not working, like, what are you doing? Get your right. ass home. And t you know, let's go on a walk. If you're not working, yeah. if you're there. You see, if, if I had a husband and he did that to me, I would have an opposite reaction. You know, I would be like, I don't want to talk to you. Get out of my room, right? So we all are motivated by different factors. That's motivating to you. That would be very demotivating to me. And it's not right or wrong. We just have different triggers. So you have to know yourself, hey, you know, what gets me to that point? Like, I'm very, I have to get in my head and motivate myself. Like today, I set my behind down and I was like, no, you're going to sit down and you're going to write from this time to this time. And I set myself down. If somebody else told me to sit down, I would do the opposite. That's me. <laughs> well, that's your Georgian's uh, blood <laughs> and, and DNA. So that's, yeah. that's a different topic. So you have to know <laughs> what motivates you. You have to know what gets you going. But in general, if you're doing what you love, if, you, if you're really in the right field for you, you don't need to be motivated. You're going to do it anyway. Yeah, we all slack off, but generally you're going to do it. I agree with that. Listen, thank you so much for taking this time out of your busy day and being with us. Hopefully, we'll get to do more. Uh, definitely stay safe, and uh, we'll be in touch. You too, Vahid. Thanks for having me. Bye, you everybody. got it. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.